This building, as I first did the energy design in 1982, had no controls because there were no devices to control other than light switches. If it got too hot, you'd open the windows. If it got too cold, you'd close the windows. I think more and more buildings will be able to provide comfort without controls. So although sophisticated controls have a very important role in industrial processes and in complicated buildings, there will be an increasing competing trend toward simplicity where the goal of the automation is not to need controls, but to have the building keep you comfortable regardless, all by itself. We're experiencing another round of oil price volatility. Uh, obviously, this has implications for the, uh, the budgets for oil and gas firms. What advice do you have for, for these firms? As a member of the National Petroleum Council who's worked in this industry 42 years, uh, I'd say this is nothing new. Oil prices go down because they went up before, they go up because they went down before. They're a commodity, they're volatile, get used to it. If you don't like it, uh, don't buy oil or gas. Uh, buy efficiency or renewables which have constant prices, therefore less financial risk. The oil companies, just like the electric utility incumbents, have to figure out different ways to use their assets, capabilities, and most difficultly, cultures to compete in a very different market that's coming at them at a speed they can scarcely imagine and much faster than their cultures will find it easy to cope with. We're seeing a, uh, a dramatic uh, ramp up in the uh, installed capacity of renewables around the world. Uh, what are some of the, the nurturing elements, market forces, regulatory environment? That allowed offshore wind to thrive in Europe and has not thrived in the United States. Europe has had strong policy support most of the time for offshore wind. The U.S. had strong site-specific or ideological opposition to offshore wind, so it's at least a decade behind. Onshore wind in the United States, on the other hand, has flourished. The average uh, roughly 2013 price of new wind power purchase agreements was two and a half U.S. cents per kilowatt hour. And if you backed out the subsidy, which has now gone away, it's still under four cents, highly competitive, particularly in the Midwest wind belt. On the other hand, we have a lot of catching up to do in the United States. Uh, in 2013 alone, China added more photovoltaic capacity than the U.S. has added in the 60 years since we invented it. RMI is now an organization with more than 100 engineers, scientists, researchers. You advise companies and governments all over the world. We're a, an independent entrepreneurial nonprofit think and do tank, the and being the important word. We work sometimes with governments, but most commonly with the private sector to create a clean, prosperous, and secure energy future. In electricity, we are helping both incumbents and insurgents create the next industry. And we're, we're helping them figure out the hard stuff, grid integration, grid security, new business and revenue and regulatory models. Notice it's much easier to solve the electricity and car problems together than separately, because when you have smart electric vehicles exchanging electricity and information through smart buildings with smart grids they're adding to the grid flexibility and storage resources that help the grid accept varying solar and wind power it is the most exciting time in the 33 years since i co-founded this organization